Oakley and Oakley. Good evening, here's at Herwins, and welcome to Pratt's Program Against Sea, in which we're going to continue doing Cinema's Config File Parsing stuff. Um, so, <clears throat> we, need to, we need to investigate this thing first. Error field already set name. Uh, I'm not sure if this, I mean, I mean, yesterday I felt like this wasn't actually correct, like it wasn't something that should be triggering. So I want to see exactly where that's uh, where that's going on. So we've got one name saying there. So basically, we've got three of them saying that they're all it feels already set. We're not including this guy. We are including this. Right, and then there's multiple names here. So there's a name set down there. There's, there isn't a name set here. There's all these names set here. So we've got, like I say, we've got three instances of name, 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 name. That are all being set. And the other name was for the run medium, the in, applica right, in application. So we've got basically, um, so we've got run being set here to in app. We've got run then again being set to in game here. However, it will have been absorbed. So it shouldn't be saying field already set because if it's been absorbed, the rule is that we just we just don't care about that. We just say that you can uh, you can set that without any repercussions. And then we've got the name set that set here again for the run project. So yeah, like I say, we've got run set here, and then we've got it set here again, and then there. So that's twi that, that's going to account for two of those names, probably. And then we've got blackboard and whiteboard. So we've got black blackboard set up here, and then we overwrite it here with blackboard. So that'll account for another one, probably. Uh, so let's just see if that actually is borne out. So if I just go to uh, the run medium and just comment out this and if I go to the blackboard actually if I, if I just do this isn't it I think that should get rid of all those field names already set well there's still one field already set so where's that coming from So we've got that setting there. Program. Yeah, so the program should be set. Yeah, it just seems all seems a little bit uh, not as intended. So I think let's step through. Yeah, I did definitely save it because I because that reduced the number of names. Let's step through and see what it produces. 
Um, Should we also say let's step into step in let's make a breakpoint for ourselves here, a conditional breakpoint. Yeah, so that should be that should be giving us that. I mean, in some ways, we could say get type field from token or something that might be a bit more descriptive as to what that's doing. Because that's by the by there. So let's try and break into here. So error field already set. Now we've got a few names, right? I mean, we've got a few of those uh, error field already set name things being showing up. So I guess we could like step through probably most of these actually, because they're not going to be triggering triggering that until we until we see one of those errors. Also, I suppose we could, could we just print out something? Do, do we have anything we can print out here? <laughs> so we've got the token. Um, Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. I wanted to see where this is. So we're up to the name, uh, the name for the Isle of Shame. So we're now we'll try to set unit. So now we're on a name blackboard. Now I think this is going to trigger the field is field is set on, aren't we? Isn't it? Probably. Because we're bearing in mind that we're actually in, we're inside the interior. Uh, we're passing the included file here, by the way. Let's have a look at the field. Is it locally? Aha. Uh -huh. So yeah, that is going to trigger. So it's a single turn and it is set locally, apparently. Uh, name yeah so is set locally is erroneously being set right because we've just got this field from this type spec It sort of seems like we're not getting a new type spec correctly. Because um, this is this is going to be the the one that does actually get get us into the here. Because you can see, single turn is locally, and this is exactly 
this case here, if it's set locally, we're going to get this case. Right. So we're currently in, in here, in medium blackboard. Let's follow it through. Um, we should see that we pop out of this scope. So this current thing is a string. So it's going to be reassigning. It's going to do this case, yeah. Uh, and then we should get the closing brace, so we pop out of this scope. Ah. Well, no, because the the parents par the parents should have. They they should have the correct type spec set. So it's the medium, medium type, yeah, field count of two. Now that's not right. Right? <clears throat> For this particular thing here, we haven't set the icon, right? You can clearly see that it wasn't set locally. So the, basically the is set local, is set locally thing ain't getting set right. It's not being used right. Either that or the type spec isn't getting set correctly. Um, or to put it another way, when you so the tight spec, right? It it gets set. Here, set tight spec, right? So it pushes a scope onto the parent. So we've got like a tree, basically. We're going to be pushing a new scope onto the parent and setting the new parents to be that newly pushed scope, right? And the pair just tell us, tells us what, um, what the ID of the scope is. So for example, project or medium, they're, they're, they are IDs, um, essentially this sort of thing or more specifically this, right? This is an ID of a scope. Um, this thing here. And the, the uh, value of that is going to be trivia in that case. So then we set types back on the parent. And all that should be doing is looking up into the our canonical type specs field ID is that correct should it not be parent ID I think that's wrong. Yeah, I mean, also the thing is here, we're returning a pointer to a type spec. And I think that's busted as well. I think we need to be returning an actual newly, you know, just an actual type spec. You know, we shouldn't be returning A 
appointed to the canonical one. I think we're only returning a, the pointer so that we could return zero and then check on that. Because the trouble is, right, in returning a pointer to a type spec, we're essentially so, um, whenever whenever that thing is um, modified, we're modifying the actual thing within the actual type specs, which we shouldn't be doing. Um, I mean, one option could be when you set a type spec is just to reset you know if you're doing it this way is to reset all of the is set locally is to to know in fact we could just see this couldn't we we could we could just show what is actually happening right we do a get type spec um you could just print the type spec which I think I did do, didn't I? Yeah, at one point I did actually do that. And I can't remember if I did that when it was working in this way or when it was working in the previous way. Uh, does print type spec also show me if, it, if something is set? Yeah, I think this probably does. Oh, it's got the three, three things. Is set local, yeah. So I'm not sure if this is particularly making much sense to folks out there, but um, bear with me on it. Let's just run it and then let's go up to the all the scope trees and just see when setting them if anything is actually set. So we're seeing the projects, because there's a medium scope. So they're all saying that they've unset, 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 unset. I suppose we could also, I mean, we might want to do this outside this, this thing here, so we print it out in both cases. You know, if we can get a scope, and that's probably what we actually do need to be doing. Because <laughs> it will actually show us everyone. Because I think in this case, it was only showing us the newly pushed ones, wasn't it? Yeah. Whereas in this one, it was actually re returning, it was actually setting it to, to one that's already been um, retrieved. So we should see more things. Yeah, right. So here we go. We've got a me medium here. So immediately after doing this, we find that this is already set. Um, set, set, yeah, that's that's our problem. So we've got a support here. So we could actually probably walk through the file and just um, just uh, get a feel for what's going on. So we need a we need a scope first of all. So our first scope is a support Patreon. So at this point, and a support, as you can see from the type specs, it's, it's showing the the uh, field that it can contain. So this support starts off with the icon and URL, both set to on set. They are both singletons, both strings. Then we come down to the next scope. Support page well, I should also use double double Z to centralize that. We then come down, we've got support paper. Oh well hang on. Got something else here. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um I've got this support. And this is set, it's on set. Then we're gonna come down into this include. And then we encounter a person. So this this gets newly pushed on. 
with all these unset we come in and we've got a support patreon and here this ain't set locally right icon isn't set locally here set locally means that upon entering this scope this thing is uh, this thing is set sorry let, let me say that another way is set locally is supposed to be saying it's supposed to be indicating to us <clears throat> if we did something like this it's supposed to be saying this it's supposed to be warning about or setting <clears throat> a singleton twice within the same local scope which is not happening here so yeah that is our problem but we do need to be able to we do need to be able to absorb um, scopes so one thing I'm a bit wary of here remember I was saying we could Re just reset the set locally things like when you come in here just say reset fields um, one potential problem with that could be say like you well let me let me just see if it, if it could be a problem actually what we've had here is it was support was it support PayPal or Patreon, wasn't it? So it's support Patreon. It was saying that the, I think it was saying that both of them were set, wasn't it? Well, actually, Here's one for you. It's set locally, it's just it's only supposed to say once you enter a scope, if you set it the same thing within the same scope, then you are not entitled to do that. I mean you can do it, but your first setting will be overwritten. That's what that is supposed to do. Now if you were to do this, if you were to do another support equals Patreon, which is kind of the situation I was thinking of potentially being an issue right if you were to then do that when you come into here it's first of all going to search through the parent scopes this this guy when you see this support patron scope it's going to be searching through the roots the root scopes um, child scopes to see if it can find a support patron right if it can then it's, it uh, uses that as its new parent, right? Now at that point, resetting the fields would be absolutely appropriate. So maybe that's just, that is just what you do. Um, is that the issue? Is that the, oh, hang on a minute. What about if you do this? So this is this scope. I mean, maybe this is fine as well, actually. I mean, maybe maybe we'd catch the error, catch the um, we currently warn people. Let's try it. Uh, so what do we need to pass? Parent probably, isn't it? Or is it just the parent type spec?
probably so whenever you enter a new scope you reset the fields for the, for the project scope that you've just brought in And then when you pop back out, so when you, you know, when you, um, when you then pop back to the parent scope, you do nothing and you just retrieve what it was already set to. So yeah, maybe that just handles it. So that's already that's always on set. There are field field already set icon. And maybe that is the correct thing to do. Um icon something. So icon is already set. Yeah, I mean I guess we're not getting not catching this, are we? Which is unfortunate. You no, know, because this this error field already set is reporting this, but it's not reporting that. Let's just see if it actually if that is actually true. <laughs> ah. So maybe it did catch it. I mean, it is this that it's talking about, isn't it? Yeah, so that's not being reported anymore. So maybe that's just magically working. Maybe it's just magically setting, setting the right thing. When is that reporting? I mean, it's reporting it when you retrieve a field. But I'm not sure I understand why it's not reporting it more than once. Yeah, so there you go, you see field already set twice. You get the error twice. Maybe. I mean, could this be confused by the fact that we can't have a project within a support and it's just leaving, it's just departing this whole thing and never actually seeing this? Maybe could that be what's happening? Um, I mean, we could actually see that, couldn't we? If we just put that down there, see if we get any of the field already set things. Okay, we get we did get them both. That's interesting. <laughs> Let me just double check. Because I would expect to see two of them. Oh, I do see two. Right. We're fine. This is perfect. <laughs> Um, and also the um, field editor icon will probably will want to uh, report what the previous thing actually said it was it would make the error a bit better uh, yeah and you can see invalid field so something is an invalid field and also project is an invalid field so once it sees that it just departs this entire scope nicely and then then reports our icon uh, reports are field ready set again for the icon and we should see that um, support patreon well I mean it's going to get overwritten by this again but if we uh, just remove that I think we should find that people just have well yeah, we don't, we're not printing that out yet should find that the Patreon person should be set to something.png yeah 
yeah, it is. And there it is again. Yeah. Cool. Syllabus right poo, yeah, perfect. So, <clears throat> the other question we had was um, when to actually, when to get essentially um, enum values from strings. So, The discussion of when to do this, uh, and I sort of feel like this should be happening in uh, script tokens, right? It's this person that should be responsible for seeing if something is valid and setting it. Rather than that being the responsibility of the, um, well, it's, it's the push project thing within resolve variables, right? Rather than that being a, a variable resolution stage. I feel like we should do that earlier on. Just to make it easier to like, I don't know, just like less onerous to do, to do that here. Because we're already in the kind of situation in the um, script tokens. We're already kind of in the mode of like uh, checking stuff, right? We're checking, we're doing syntax checking. Um, I think that might be all we're doing actually. Oh, syntax checking and unchecking of fields are even permitted. Right, so we're already doing that, those bits of checking. Um, so that the, the later, la any later people don't need to bother. This seems to be like the responsibility. You know, the the idea of getting getting uh, boolean IDs from strings. And uh, what was the other thing? Get numbering scheme from string. I also had an idea for these this this fit thing. Um, so I have a lot of f so that's that's two things, right? It's the um, when to do the get boolean from string and, and the get numbering scheme from string and get log, get log level from string. I'm inclined to make that into the make scope tokens do this. Um, now the idea of fitting, I think I've sort of realized that um, I can just make this be a, just a generic fit function. <laughs> um, And this is just prompted by the, the feeling that I'm doing a lot of fit calls. Um, right, I've got a fit rule, fit scope, fit type block, fit tokens, fit token. I've got all these functions, right? And they're all doing essentially the same thing, right? All they do is they, they just uh, see what the blocks, see what the current count of the thing is. They, yeah, see what the current count is, and if the if that modded with the block size is equal to zero, reallocate it. Right, that's all it's doing. So I'm inclined. So block size is a u u into eight here for some reason, but I'm inclined to just make a just a one size fits all fit function, which will do all of this, uh, and. Also, make it take a clear boolean. So this guy needs to clear, right? It's kind of interesting that the other ones don't bother to clear. Maybe we kind of figured out that they, that they don't need to do um, because we can rely on all of the stuff being set, I suppose. Or maybe there just isn't very much to set. 
Um, but yeah, I think I definitely figured out that fit project needs to clear. Um, and that would just be just the same, just simple again. It just, it's just like, uh, Well, actually, <laughs> C pro. I mean, they're all operating on C project, right? And C project, project count. We're going to have the project count coming in. Yeah, I think what's so basically. We're fitting a project in a config, but I think what we should do, or what we'll have to do instead, is just pass the C pro C pass the actual C project, the pointer to that, and that is the thing that we actually operate on. We pass the project count separately. We pass the block size. Plus the width of the data type. Um, also, and we pass it a clear boolean. Uh, and that should suit on burps, I believe. Yeah. So like here, instead of passing the in configure rules R to this. You pass the actual thing that you want to be reallocating. So, for the fit rule, rather than passing R, you pass a pass a pointer to R ID, essentially. But this doesn't know that it's the the fit function won't know that it's an R ID. All it knows is that it's a it's just a pointer to so avoid star. And then this guy here can be responsible for for doing uh, whatever it needs to do. So yeah, I think that's what I'll do first. I'm going to first of all do the fit because that should be dead easy to do. Just to change everyone over to just use that one fit function, um, and then make the scope tokens function responsible for setting the those. Um, integers um, but not before I take one two minute break
<coughs> so fit. I think I'll do a separate fit and clear function as well, don't I? Which we'll call the fit function. So fit is going to be taking the item thing to be thingamajigging. It's going to take a data width it's going to also take a item per block oh and an account so it's the base Item counts. Let's let's say which way should I do it? <laughs> Super doesn't matter, but uh, item count. And it's, it's essentially so. So this guy will need to take all those dudes so you can pass it through. And then it just needs to clear from the base. Uh, hmm, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> it's not the base. We're talking about a pointer to somewhere into the thing, so it's going to be base plus. I mean, I see we can just do this. Um. Yeah, and it probably does need to take how much it need, how much you want to be freeing, uh, clearing rather. Uh, let's actually just go and grab our clear function. So it's taking a void thing we and it's taking a size. So it's basically saying, uh, and the way that we're actually using it is block size times the size of project. So. Items per block times the width and bytes. Right? That does build. <laughs> it's kind of a bit weird, but maybe we'll get away with it. I mean, yeah, I'm not sure what James would have to say about this. Because what we're doing here is we're doing pointer arithmetic on a void star uh, <laughs> well James or Martins as well actually I think both both guys were, were um, explaining to me uh, the illegality of pointer arithmetic on voids hmm Let's uh, let's try it. Let's see. Let's try it and see what happens. So this guy is currently using token. So it's um, the set t. What's that token rather? So we want to be passing the pointer to that. The width in bytes is the size of a.
token. Yeah, so sounds like an actual dereference token. Um, item count is going to be the set count. And the items for block, we had it as 16. So does that die? It does die. Cool. Identity free on address which was not marked. Fit. Ah, shouldn't be passing it like that. So now it doesn't like a right memory like this. So this much is a zero page push token. So set token, set count type token, token type. So we've passed set token. So previously we were passing Blimey. Previously we're going to do a fit token passing the set. Um, so then set is going to be the T. And then we're doing T token realloc. But here we're now doing fit. So we're passing the set token itself directly. So it wasn't a pointer to the set. And similarly here it's not a pointer to the token, but just the T token itself, which it is itself a token, a uh, pointer. token was then doing if item count modded with the thing which equals zero which is which seems fine um, and then it was doing realloc the t token which is our base um, the t the um, the count the item count plus the block size times by the width so yeah that does seem to be doing exactly what we were doing so what's it not liking things were right into a memory access uh sorry address points to the zero page push token Thirty-nine. So it's claiming to be right to the zero page. T count plus block size. Yeah, and I am doing that. Yeah. The item count plus items per block. Times the width in bytes. Hmm. Interesting.
Yeah, I'm really not sure what's um, what the problem is actually here. Yeah, right, so the token is currently not initialized yet. Do you just need to do a check for that? Like, can realloc not really check if a void star is pointed to the zero page and reallocate it? Is that right? Is that the problem? Because really, the other guy should also be coming in. Should also be looking at this, shouldn't it? Oops. Now it's dying. So the fit, the fit passed. But what is it saying? Didn't like the t set token. Let's just um, let it do the other thing, just so I can see what that's saying. Yeah, so that's currently also token as the null pointer. But this time it, got, it actually succeeds. Um, so that got set to that. Let's just roll back to the other guy. Step over that that fit line. I suppose we could also step into it, couldn't we? Just see what actually happens. See, we could see what C token gets set to. Hold on a sec. Oh, we probably need to pass a pointer to a pointer, don't we? Is that what we need to be doing? That is probably what we need to be doing. So we can actually modify this guy. That yeah, I reckon that is it actually. <laughs> um I'll just continue to step though. Um just to kind of show what's kind of happening. Right. P base is a void, is that the null, null pointer? We're going to get into this case. Right, P base is now actually allocated, but the problem is when we come back out, that hasn't persisted out to the, um, out of the caller. So we actually need to. Um, Make this take a pointer to a pointer. And then we've got to do this, I imagine. And then when we call fit. So it doesn't like that, does it not? I was expecting. So yeah, expected a void star star, but our argument is of type token star star. Ah, right. So, that's interesting. Is that why you need to make it as a define? <laughs> is, so maybe I've just discovered why Sean makes them as macros. Uh, 
Um, God damn it, how do you do these guys? Uh, <laughs> I hate, hate macros. going to compile. Of course it isn't. Dereferencing a void star pointer. a while before void so you got the do didn't I add the while at the end I think that's I think doing it as a macro is what the doctor orders by the way. It's a fair clue. Cause it's just saying yeah, it's an incredible point of type, so it's a voice style style argument type so I can start. Tell you what, let's fuck it. Let's just uh forget this idea and just continue doing the piecemeal fits. Bit of a shame, but uh, that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, so, scope tokens. What we're doing is, let's just make sure it actually does build, by the way. <laughs> Run, rather. Um, so, We're sorting out booleans and I mean these are actually numbers really, frankly. So we could reassign we could re establish the actual How can I say this? Well actually so yeah, I mean, ac actually, what we're going to, what we want to be saying is, um, these guys are going to come through as a string, right? The tokenizer is going to see these guys as a string, so we will come in here. We'll see it as a string. to say uh, if the, if this guy is a numbering scheme we do some bit of logic essentially it's get get numbering scheme from to, uh, from string 
if it's ignore privacy we do something else if it's single browser well yeah if it's single browser time we do something else again and if it's log level we'll do something else if it's anything other than any of those those things then we go in and do this logic here right Is that popping down there exactly? So we've got the if else. Okay, yeah, that's what I want. How does it work? Oh, it's further down as well. That's fine. <laughs> so it's going to return a number screen. You just take a string, okay. string is going to be the value content well pair value why not We actually want to be getting an assignment, <clears throat> so this actually is going to turn into a an int. Strangely enough, Let's see if we actually get any of that happening. Unknown tag. Oh, <laughs> didn't bring that up. Then what we need to do is we want we need to say uh, is can we get an int assignment? It's, it's essentially this get int assignment. Uh, now I also wonder this config pair assignment. So we we don't need to use these pairs at all yet because this guy only has to expect a semicolon. Assignments and once we yeah the assignment is only needed in this this particular person down here. So I mean it kind of suggests that all you do is you know you stick all of these down there. Does that work? Um, yeah, I'm probably checking something I shouldn't be. And this was being set from the value content. So the value is being set here, by the way. Or rather, it's being set in this this call. So 
So we should be doing the same logic as the FT number thing. Uh, and also, I mean, this again, like the whole idea of just sticking those guys together. Yeah, that's perfectly acceptable, I reckon. value is going to be the numbering scheme. I think this is what we want to be doing. could also add to our thing actually I kind of can't can I I was going to say we could add to our thing a boolean type but that would mean changing quite a bit of stuff well I'll say quite a bit changing some stuff whereas if we just keep it as a string we will end up in in this area here. What I'm basically talking about is in the init type specs function, um, <clears throat> you know these things where we sort of say uh, ignore privacy level um, rather than being ft strings, uh, rather than the field type being a string. We should say that the field type is, uh, in the case of ignore privacy and single rather tab, boolean. Right, but the the um, knock-on effect of that uh, uh, what would the knock-on effect of that actually be? Because when we tokenize stuff. Yeah, the knock-on effect will be, won't it? The knock-on effect will be that we will never get in, never get into this situation here. So we're going to switch when we switch on this field type. If we make that thing be, you know, if we introduce, if we make those guys be like an FT number, they would actually enter this case here. Uh, and this guy is expecting a different syntax from strings. But the thing is, we actually write the guys as strings. So you'd end up in a situation where if you come in here, you'd have to actually say straight up. I mean, I know you have to do it here, but you'd have to say if the field type is actually a string, which is kind of bizarre if you think about it. Sorry, that wouldn't be the check, would it? What would the check be? We should make it be a string type. This is going to be a string anyway. <laughs> we should make it a number. I think the thing is, if you make it a number, you just won't be able to. <laughs> figure out what things are. I don't know. It's making more sense for me to do it under the, under the string area. So I'm just going to do that. Should 
Should we just see first of all if that's actually done anything right? So when we come to So that's got a key, yeah. So when you print, when you print a an int pair, Bear with me here. Oh right, really? Is that just too far? Damn, where is that? So that's what's 1506, is it? Blimey. Right, this guy gets moved up then. Let's put it above all of these prints. Print support. Free include. Um, Should be fine, I think. Gotta place any. Uh, and then when we resolve, resolve variables, when we push a project, when we see the, a numbering scheme, what we actually do is we don't do this. We just say that this equals. So that's good. That's switching on the. It's going over the pair count. Yeah. So this isn't even going to be a pair anymore. Um, it's going to come in as an actual int pair, right? So it's going to be basically these guys, isn't it? Um, what is it? Yeah, numbering scheme. It's going to be that. And the log double, which we're not doing yet. <coughs> I guess in the default case, you actually just print whatever, don't you? Oh, sorry, it's not printing, is it? It's uh, this guy's setting things. So yeah, <laughs> all of these things need to know, <laughs> like what they're actually sh what they should be setting. Uh, a numbering scheme, yeah, get numbering scheme from string. Uh, so it shouldn't be this. You just set this directly. Same deal with this. What did I just delete? 
make that? Oh. Well, that's not right. Doesn't like this. Ah. Okay. So now that we've done that, we might as well actually go back and where we did the in numbering scheme version. Let's do the in ident log level version. And also, we need to handle. Maybe also maybe do already handle that actually. <laughs> Scope tokens. Right, if we all do this, I don't think we do. Then we do all of this lot. Uh, actually, I think get number scheme is going to report that, isn't it? Isn't it? Ain't it? Under number scheme, yeah. So we can just let that let that do its thing. Thang. Um, and then let's just do the same deal. Now the unfortunate thing about this is we're going to end up writing the same code again and again. Kind of. Just see, let's just uh, write it though. Five log doors that so um how has it ended up setting a log level to emergency? I mean I guess technically maybe emergency is zero with one. <laughs> so that sets it to debug. Yeah, I guess emergency is just the the, the default. Yeah, I mean, if we just set, if it's an invalid setting, what do we do? Like, do we just say, game over? We can't pass this config. I suppose we kind of do, don't we?
Okay. And also in the print in pair thing, we could choose to to even print these guys in a different color if we fancy it. There's that, and we needed to do the booleans, didn't we? So yeah, these these I don't log levels. These are specific things, right? And they need to call specific functions. But if something is a boolean, uh, I mean, if something is ignore privacy or single browser tab, they're just straight up boolean. So they can just say field id equals this or field id equals that, and then we just do get boolean from string. So if I didn't privacy, uh, ignore privacy, um, I don't think I can use value, can I? Because value is going to be used elsewhere. In fact, it's going to be used in this exact thing. So, uh, I mean, they might as well just contain, but they might as well, just, yeah, they might as well just be actual booleans. Uh, and is that actually what they are? I mean, it's possible that that is what they already are, but um, let's have a look. So, print boolean. Apparently, it's saying print boolean, which kind of suggests that ignore privacy is itself a boolean. Yeah, and they are booleans. So yeah, we're gonna push on actual booleans. So that means that we need to be able to push booleans onto that tree. And uh, get bool assignments. Is that true? These are these are right. Get into assignments here. Yeah, if we push them as bulls onto the main scope tree. Um Which is exactly what we're talking about doing, isn't it? I think that should I think that should be fine. Um, so let's just write the code.
here's a get, in, get assignment, get into assignment. So we con config purge, we need a config. Um, yeah, here's all our dudes. So we've got a config pair, config int pair. Let's add a config bool pair. Do we have a print boolean button uh, function already? We do. Yeah, so print scope is going to need to know about that print boolean function. Um, and what do they actually have? Well, hmm, it's not unfortunate. this don't you shouldn't I mean boolean pair is just saying sending a key and why is that not being found a key and a value a config identifier a key ah No, no, that, that should be fine, because print boolean itself is going to ret retrieve that, and we want to be passing a title. So all you do... Oh, I just need to put this here so I can actually make this accessible. So passing the boolean strings... Do we have boolean strings? I mean, I guess it's just like, uh, if that is true, pass it is true. Um, what is it? It's the value. Um, well, I beg your pardon. It's, sorry, it is the it is the title that I'm talking about. And I do have those titles. They are in the config identifier strings. Is it ID or is it key? I think it was key. So you pass that. You pass the value. And you pass the indentation. So yeah, that seems to be fine. Um, so let's just continue on. Print in pair, just a print boolean. Print scope tree. We want to be printing all the bool pairs out. We then go down. We need to fit. So there's. Here we go. So let's just duplicate these little dudes.
Um, Print bull pair, really? Didn't I? Ah, did I call it print boolean pair? Yeah, get bull assignments, okay. So Slightly busted that I'm calling this bool and this bool per count. Let's go for the shorter one. Hopefully I didn't screw up too badly there. Actually I probably did, didn't I? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Yeah, let's just uh, try that one more time. So it's possible that that has been all that I need to do. Let's see if it crashes. Doesn't crash. So we're doing a bullpark, get bull assignment. Uh, I think everything looks kind of reasonably correct. tokens. Did we actually do the boolean thing? Skip. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so we did the, we did that. Uh, we erroneously set a thing. So let's just see what happens with this. And then boolean. Yep, fine. Um, I assume print scope tree ain't, ain't doing. It did the balls. Oh, it is. But that is doing the print ball. We did add that. So that's doing that. Is free. Do we have a free ball? 
We don't. Do we have free int? Uh, do we have anything? Do we need to free them at all? At this point. Uh, here we go. We need, need to make this guy free be the uh, door pairs. Looking at this actually, this print include this allow and deny thing. I mean, you can conceivably, you could have a, if you want to be really fancy, maybe you could add to our booleans allow and deny. <laughs> so you've got like an entire, got all these different synonyms for true and false. Maybe that's a bit, a bit too, um, a bit too fancy for your own good. We're currently freeing stuff. We're currently, evidently, currently pushing it, push, pushing it on. We're currently seeing if if something is actually a valid boolean value which is nice because we didn't we didn't really have that before until uh, later on uh, and this guy is also pushing these guys on don't they yeah we're already handling those uh, so that's it isn't it uh, isn't all the all the things that we need to handle Is our variables so in per count? So these guys are considered in pairs, don't risk him not level. Uh, yeah, right. So these guys, aha. So these guys shouldn't be there, should they? Shouldn't these be under the oh, I'll tell you what, they're probably not set. So ignore privacy if we just put this to true. Yeah, it's not taking effect because it it just isn't being set. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's just it's got to print something, hasn't it? Right. When uh, when you do the print print project, this print bool has to print something. Uh, and when it gets past the uh, the p ignore privacy. It's not. It's not got anything set in it. So. You know, it would expect this thing here to have set it, but it hasn't been set because it it all gets initialized to zero. Remember, it gets um, cleared. So that's what's going on there. So after having thingamajig through the thingamajigs. isn't it? Oh no, we need to push it, that's what we're doing. <coughs> yeah, so again, we need to actually know what we're setting. Uh, 
and it's not get bull from string it's just um, this So, it doesn't like that. So we're going over the bool pair counts. Switching on the bool pairs I key. Doesn't like the call. Oh, it doesn't like this read, does it not? Bullpad I key. So we've got the bullpad counts. Ding magic, ding magic, ding magic. So it reckons it's pointing to the zero page. That being initialized correctly. So S pool bull pair count is the scope tree. So we've got a scope tree. Where are these guys being used? We've got bull pair count, bull pairs. Free scope tree happens here. Free scope tree happens there. Scope tree parent. Calloc the size of the scope tree. And the scope tree is containing that information. Right. Bull pair counts and bull pairs. So we are clearing that, setting it to nothing. Also, why am I looking through scope tree like this? Shouldn't I be just looking at where that's used? Hmm, interesting. Yeah, because like I say, scope tree is going to be calocking this, the size of a scope tree, and scope tree we did correctly add the the new the new people to here, bull pair count, bull pairs.
I mean, this is the thing that we need to allocate because you're pushing, you're pushing a, a variable number of them on. That's our problem. Sorry, bull pairs. Yeah, that was what we needed. Ah, interesting, yeah, you need to actually go through and do whatever you want. Actually, I'll tell you what, I can just do this. Get assignments. Get inside. We did do the get bull assignments. Yeah. I guess we could comb through and just look where we're um, looping over the int pair count. Where are we up to? We're down to 74% of the way through the file. Let's just keep going manually. It's not too far. Pass the include rules. We don't give a sh shite about uh, the boolean-ness about these guys, do we? Don't think we're doing anything especially interesting because it's just strings. Um. Yeah, and if we're going to get down to something like this, trying to find the type spec for this, we're not going to find it. So we're never going to end up in a situation where we have to talk about anything other than strings. Yeah, this is all big old scope tokens. Struggle that to do about the title list stuff. 
and then we're down to this lot. Um, yeah, which I think is just all handled now, isn't it? those little ones that are just uh, identifying our, our little guys we'll do that a bit differently by the way we'll, we'll make this be like a global well we, inside print config we'll, we'll initialize an indent level and we'll just pass it down and p make people increment it as they need to same as we do with the print so scope tree So free projects. Now that we're doing all of those dudes, um, we would need to free them all. You know, all these guys that we make strings, we would need to free everything, all of these make strings. However, I'm going to let us leak for now. I mean, it doesn't really matter, and it won't take. It won't actually take long to actually just free these guys. Uh, so I probably should do that. Um, but essentially, this, these make string calls are, they're all going to change anyway. They're all going to become resolve strings, um, so that we can actually resolve uh, these variables, which is the whole point of what we're actually doing at the moment. Uh, so that Resolve string themselves will call make string probably, uh, unless we make a different function that does essentially the same thing as make string, similar a similar thing. But I think we'd like to just use a memory arena. So rather than because make make string currently, um, it actually uh, allocates so it uses malloc to actually. Bigger realloc, but which itself uses malloc if it uh, if the thing is a null point is not allocated itself. Um, so it's using the main heap allocator. Um, uh, and I think I would like to switch to doing using making a function that actually. Um, just pushes on to a <clears throat> pushes strings on to a memory arena essentially and then once you've got that all you need to do is you just free the arena and, you, and you're done so you don't need to piecemeal go through like freeing all of these guys in your free projects right you, would, you wouldn't need to have like however many of these that you need I'm going to do them though. I know I sort of said that I'd let it uh, <clears throat> let it leak, but I think I will just just let it let it go for it. I mean, I won't get too crazy. Um, <clears throat> like I won't comb through and make sure that. It, well, I'm, I don't know. Maybe it will. <laughs> but point being that it that it, it's, it's all going to change. So, 
what are we talking about here we're talking about the p so going up to the up to the dot the equals hmm. Uh, yeah, and like I say, we're not we're not even doing these guys yet. Yeah, and then it's it doesn't even it doesn't even use the actual uh check. <laughs> so yeah, we're kind of passing these things in to the scope tree, but not actually bothering with them because we still we just haven't got a good idea as to how those those guys are gonna actually. Figure, figure in the whole scheme of anything, really. <laughs> this could put the update into a concert. Do a print int pair. On the update interval. That takes a comping in pair. Oh, right, so it's just like the other guys. Fine. So we haven't set an update interval for anyone. So yeah, you can kind of see like stuffing stuff into structs is much more of a piecemeal thing than simply, you know, pushing like um, generic pairs onto a sort of tree. And it could be nice if uh, if this kind of thing could be. in a bit more hands-off way.
Uh, we don't need that to, to do anymore. And the mode thing is not even there, is it? <laughs> kind of these guys, isn't it? But since they're already in their own little switch statement, we probably don't need to mark them especially. Uh, okay, it's 10 o'clock. I think there's quite a bit more of Mr. Scuff, isn't there? Yeah, 50 minutes. It's quite a long album, this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a quick break, get some, get a sandwich, uh, and then continue, um, continue on. So let's just uh, fade out Mr. Scuff. Stop Mr. Scuff. Put the volume back up to how it needed to be and sign off for now. So thank you very much, Heroes and Heroines, for being here, for being fantastic and beautiful and inspirational and heroic uh, and uh, I will see you at the next stream. Farewell for now.